Now I've got my animation offset being controlled by my plane effector and its linear field and that's keyframe to pass through so those all opening that's great. So for this animation I wanted to create a little bit of variation as well in the color of the laptops. Obviously they're all gray at the moment because of my display tag um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the um, MoGraph shader to put some randomization in the colors of these um, laptops. So I've already got <clears throat> in the body of my laptop I've already got a material on there it's this one here and it's got this sort of purpley bluish color to it so I'm going to change this for a MoGraph shader that will allow me to add some random uh, colors so in the color section under my texture I'm going to click on the small arrow here and under MoGraph I'm going to pick the multi shader so once the multi shader is created we can go into it to change its settings and what the multi shader does is it lists a number of materials as we can add more if we want to and each of these materials can be either a simple color or they could be a picture or all sorts of other types of shading um, uh, functions that we've got available to us so I just want basic colors for this so for this first texture in my multi shader I'm going to make just a plain color and I'm going to set my color to um, something similar to what I had before. I'm going to create just a variety of bluey purpley shades uh, for this um, random shader. So I've created my color there. I can navigate back up out of that color picker into my multi shader. Here's texture number two. That's going to be a color as well. And I'm going to make, um, let's just make a darker blue color for this. And let's navigate back up. And let's add a couple more colors. So I'll go add, there's another one, add, there's one more. And again, I'll click this triangle button, add a simple color, and let's go for a really light pale blue. That will do. Let's navigate back up. And I'll make one more that's a maybe sort of a purpley kind of color. And make some a little bit darker just so I've got a bit of variety okay so four different shades there and if I navigate up once more here I am back in the color channel there's the multi shader there there's the four shades that I have so this is a MoGraph shader so we'll use a MoGraph effector to control it now that material is already applied to the laptop so I don't need to drag and drop it over there it's already um, it's already applied uh, I'm also going to delete my display tag here because I need to see the colors. Depending on what kind of graphics card or computer you've got, these colors will show up in the viewport, um, but obviously not if I'm using this display tab, which has changed everything to just plain gray boxes. So I'm just going to select the display tag. I won't actually delete it. I'll just turn it off for now. And what I need to do, let's just go back to the start of my sequence. And now that I've turned that display tag off, my interface is going very slow again. What I need to do is create a random effector to randomize those colors. So I'll select my cloner, go to the MoGraph menu, and under effectors, I'll choose a random effector. Now, automatically my position is being randomized. I don't want to do that, so I'll turn off position. That's under the parameters tab. All I want to do is change the color mode. So it's going to change to a um, effector color. Now we should see straight away, now we've got some randomization going on of my colors there. So that random effector is just taking all those different shades from that MoGraph multi-shader and applying them randomly to my clones. Now if you want a slightly different random pattern, you can go into the effector tab of the random effector and you can change the seed value. This seed just changes the randomness of those colors. If I just click through, and as you can see, each time I set a different value, it randomly creates a, a new random distribution of those colors. So I'm just going to click through until I get something that I'm happy with, and that'll do me. Okay, so we've got our cloner. It's got the multi-shader material on it. The plane effector is controlling the timing of the lid opening and shutting and the random effector is randomizing the color of these uh, laptops. 
So now we're ready to render this. Um, what I usually do when I want to render a sequence is position my camera or position my view and create a camera. And when we create a camera, it always appears where we're currently looking in our perspective view. Um, I might just change the lens on this so that it's a wider angle uh, view and make sure I'm looking through the camera. And now that's, once I just position my camera, I can go through my settings and get that ready to render. So in my render settings, you can hit Command-B to get those. I need to make sure I'm rendering at the correct resolution, 1920 by 1080. I'm going to render all the frames. That's all I need to set there. Under the Save menu, I need to make sure that I choose a pathway to save my files and uh, PNG files are fine to render. I usually turn on alpha channel for every render that I do. It doesn't cost anything in extra time, but it's always a good idea to have that turned on. You can choose to use it or not in After Effects, but um, it's, yeah, it's just a useful thing to turn on all the time. The sketch and tune is already set up. So once that's all done, I can just save my scene file and under my render menu, I can add it to the render queue. Uh, there's some previous renders there, I might just delete those. And there it is ready to go and I can just hit the start rendering button and that will start rendering my sequence.